Okay, so we are going to look at how bacteria reproduce. So they reproduce asexually. You should now have a, an idea what that means. So what does that mean? Anyone like to share? How many parents? What type of cell division? Any takers? One parent by binary fission. It's binary fission and what type of cell division though? So binary fission is the name of the how they reproduce, but what's the type of cell division? Thank you, Rachel. Meiosis. So is it is it is it photocopying, making clones, or is it making very different offspring? What do we think? Clones. Making clones. So if you're making clones, you won't do meiosis. You'll do the, the other one. So the method that they're going to use to reproduce is binary fission. And we're saying one parent... We're saying two offspring or two daughters. We'll get to those. Um, and it, it's all it's going to be mitosis is going to be your method of cell division if you're asexually reproducing. So if it's okay with you, I'm going to change my share. Is that okay with everyone? Miles, stop talking to someone else. So you can tell these things, they're smiling. So who's he smiling at? Have a look at all the screens to see who he's smiling at. Alrighty, so play you this. So our DNA replicates, the cell splits in two, the DNA is either side and eventually it will split apart. I want to show you this one. So this is it in real life. Stops them. So very, very quickly you can have lots and lots of cells it's kind of freaky but it's binary fission it's usually the words or what they are interested in so we're going to start with our cell on top it has the cell membrane and the cell wall and it has its dna chromosome i'm not interested currently in the plasmid so we have a cell wall we have a cell membrane And the red is our DNA chromosome. So it is prokaryotic, no nuclear membrane. So in our next picture, the DNA is going to replicate by meiosis. Or sorry, by mitosis, apologies. So in this picture, we still have our membrane except now we have two DNA chromosomes what's the word I want So we get this groove down here in our cytoplasm. So 
So the whole process is called binary fission. Okay, Julie, I'm going off you, so if you tell me thumbs up, and Rachel, I will assume we're good. Miss, what does that grave into cytoplasm part mean? So what it is, is that um, the, the, a kind of a groove appears and that's how it's going to split. Remember when we did cell continuity and we did animal cells and we called it a cleavage furrow? It's kind of the equivalent of that. You remember that? Yeah, thank you. Okay, is it okay to move on? Alrighty, so in terms of our blurb then, so when the cell gets to a certain size, it's going to, the DNA replicates by mitosis. We get two identical copies of DNA. Your cell grows and elongates with a strand of DNA at each end. Yes, your screen is frozen. Thank you, the Tara. Is that right now? So the cell splits by the cytoplasm splitting and we get two identical daughter cells. So you've already seen, sorry, the pictures.
okay so just again we've had this when we did cell continuity but asexual reproduction we get genetically identical offspring there's little genetic variation and that would suggest they're slow to evolve but actually the reality is very very different the fact that they reproduce every 20 minutes means that if a mutation happens then that's going to be passed on so in seven hours you'd end up with a million cells and new new mutations can spread very quickly and because they reproduce every 20 minutes that's the reason why they evolve resistance to new antibiotics Okay, so we're going to do um, a little bit more. So you have a resistant set of colonies, and the antibiotic will not kill its clones, but it will kill the others. Okay, so you just need this little diagram for you. So this is the first generation, makes the babies, they make more babies. We now add antibiotic. And the antibiotic will kill everything except for if you now have a mutant in here then that antibiotic will not work so you either need to find a new with antibiotic at this line so that will be after 40 minutes 20 minutes 40 minutes this is when you add antibiotic the fact that you've got one there that's got resistance Can cause a problem so we'll go back and we'll talk a little bit more about antibiotics specifically what they are and why we get resistance in the population and when we do on that day I've I think I've attached a video to your homework that actually if you now watch it with a COVID head on you it makes for kind of makes you slightly uncomfortable but I think it's definitely worth watching do you know antibiotics are only in existence of like from a go into your pharmacy and get an antibiotic since 1945 and they were life changing when they came about whereas we've never known anything other than them
Hey, were you happy with that? So again, unlikely that we asked for the diagram, but it kind of helps you un to understand how or why antibiotic resistance goes ahead. So the only thing that I'm just going to say here for this is what do I want? So one bacteria gets a mutation in its plasmid. resistant to antibiotic and said bacterium reproduces that should be IUM so it's reproducing every 20 minutes and that's the big issue Miss, what's the word after um, one bacteria? Um, gets a mutation in its plasmid. So it's usually not the DNA chromosome that gets the mutation, it's the plasmid. Miss, out of the two diagrams, which one do we need to know for an exam? The binary fission diagram. That's the, the main one, and this one is just showing you diagrammatically that once you have a mutation, it will be antibiotic resistant. There's a good chance. So again, something similar happens with COVID in that it gets a mutation on its piece of DNA or its piece of RNA, and that's what makes it resistant to the vaccine. Or why you have to why you have to change the vaccine. Okay, so we'll just do a couple of minutes of, of endospores. The chromosomes get this endospore that goes around it. It's not, this isn't the best animation. And the rest of the cell is going to die. So you only get this when things are bad. And then at the very, very end, here you can see that once conditions are going, So if things aren't right, that the cell will try and protect itself. So we'll say it again later, but your unfavorable conditions could be lack of water, could be lack of food. Um, or a change in the environment. Uh. 
So if we go back and have a look at the diagram that we drew for binary fission, we're going to change it ever so slightly now. So I'm going to go here. So we're still getting our beginning. Except we are now getting rid of our cell elongates. So the first two pictures are going to be the same. Except our third picture now we're making it different in that we now have our endospore forms around one of the DNA chromosomes. So our parent cell will die and when that's done with you are left with an endospore and that will wait until conditions are favorable again. So there is food, there right environment. So once we have suitable conditions So steps one and two, they are going to be the same as for binary fission, it's just the ending is different.
Okay, folks, I am. you can turn off your screens and your cameras. I'm just going to record the end of this for me so I can put it up onto YouTube later and I'll put it back up. I will see you at five past three. So you will hear me talking. So I apologize for that. Okay, so for the end of this, here is the blurb that goes with it. Under harsh conditions, your DNA is going to replicate. You end up with two identical copies of your DNA. A thick wall will form around one of your DNA strands. And then your parent cell is going to die because it's losing, um, the cytoplasm loses water by osmosis. And you now have an endospore which will remain dormant until the conditions are favorable. So what happens when conditions are favorable? Well, the spores will absorb water, the tough wall will break down, and the cell, or the, you will have reproduction by binary fission. And in terms of what endospores can withstand, they can cope with the lack of food and water, they can cope with high temperatures, they can cope with some poisons, and they will survive for hundreds of years. So this is primarily the reason why when the tombs were opened in Egypt, it was a mixture of bacterial and fungal spores but they were inhaled and now found a nice place to live and that was the end of that.